Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Board of Selectmen's meeting for Monday, May 11th. Uh, first item on the agenda is a report uh, on the Sims Fund, starting with Mr. Chapter Lane. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so, provided the board a hard copy tonight, uh, a report that would be to town meeting from the Board of Selectmen and the town treasurer and collector. Uh, this would be to comply with the special act that created the Sims Urban Renewal Fund, which required an annual report of the activities of the fund to town meeting. Uh, what this report has is the activities of the past four fiscal years, as well as uh, a statement and an update on the fund policy that was adopted by the Board of Selectmen, uh, I believe at the end of uh, calendar year 2014, in accordance with uh, a recommendation from our outside independent auditors. So, uh, barring any objections from the board, this will be provided to town meeting members. Uh, the treasurer and collector has reviewed it and has signed off on it. So I'd be happy to answer any questions that the board might have. Any questions from the board? <coughs> Mr. Dunn. Thank you, Mr. Greeley. Uh, under uh, FY13, prior property tax revenue, uh, looking at the table, Yep. what is that? Uh, that, that would have been not attributable to what was actually on uh, you know, the, the FY13 tax bill, uh, most likely either the 12 or maybe even the 11 tax bill, but collected in FY13. Oh, uh, right, right, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, because that would have been when it was changing hands and all that good stuff. Okay. Okay, Mr. Carroll. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, uh, yeah, Mr. Chaplain, I, I know I had sent a, um, a question along to you regarding the FY 2015 uh, property tax revenue and why it appears here is, is so much less than um, 2014, whether or not that's just a partial collection or. Yeah, so what you see happening here is pr predominantly in FYs 13 and 14, there was both the debt service associated with the property as well as <coughs> legal expenses associated with the project development and the other lion's share really being uh, cost associated with the designated town representative uh, that service as a liaison between the town residents and managing or you know, working with the co contractors or the developers. Uh, so there was more than just the debt service in there and that's why we were putting a larger portion of the property tax revenue into the fund. Mm -hmm. Starting in FY15 and beyond, there's really only the cost of the debt service and the $5,000 legal reserve that the board voted as part of their fund policy. So the total taxes on the Sims property, both the housing development and the assisted living site, are over 900000 but we only will move into this fund the amount necessary to cover both the debt service and then that legal reserve. So you see an amount less than what is actually being collected and the rest just accrues to the general fund as any other taxes would. Great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, Mr. Dunn. Move approval. Second. Further discussion? Anybody here wishing to speak on this matter? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Okay, item number two, discussion and approval, outside seating and cafe recommendations. Carol Kowalski, our Director of Planning and Development. Welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm Carol Kowalski, Director of Planning and Community Development. Uh, request came via the board's staff to provide assistance and recommendations. Uh, what I've tried to do is give you some recommendations that will allow you some consistency, but also some flexibility, uh, depending, regardless of who's coming before you. Um, I'm recommending that you try to get 48 inches of free passageway, but no less than 36, because that's um, ADA. 36 is not a lot. Um, 48 is much more comfortable for anyone of any ability. Um, but sometimes you just won't be able to get it, and I don't see any reason not to allow it if you, as long as you have the 36 inches. Um, and there is no ADA requirement that the uh, access way be straight. It can meander. Uh, for the most part, I think that in Arlington, you'll find that a straight path will be afforded, uh, whether you're in the center of the Heights or the East or Broadway. Um, I'm also recommending that you have the flexibility to locate seating either close to the building facade or away from the building, or both, if it makes sense. Um, but I think it should be based on some standards. Um, and just to outline those standards, uh, quickly, uh, one is just provided they provide the least obstruction for pedestrian access to get around the seating area and to get into the storefronts. Uh, the second standard would be that the location shouldn't extend beyond the outer edges of the building facade. In some instances, I think you will have to allow some latitude, and I'm saying to consider up to 10 feet of latitude because there will be some obstructions that will prevent the uh, location of the seating right in front. 
Um, I'm also saying that you might want to consider having a 256 square feet general maximum, but that you consider increasing that provided that you're going to allow uh, to always have that 36 inches around the square footage and that you make this determination based on a scaled dimensioned plan that shows all the obstructions. I'm also um, recommending that any additional seating that um, always um, be considered in relation to other codes, uh, whether it's you know, health code, um, building code, zoning code, that may affect how many seats, how many additional seats in addition to the interior seats could be allowed. Um, I also urge the board to increase the amount of insurance coverage to a million dollars um, and have the town name as, named as additionally insured. I have to defer to town council on, um, on this, but um, 25,000 seems especially low, if, especially if it's an establishment that's serving alcohol. One million dollars is more typical from what I've seen from other communities. I'm also asking you to consider not issuing the permit until you have that insurance certificate in hand. You get the insurance certificate and they get the permit. Um, um, and I'm, finally, I'm suggesting that these be renewed on a calendar year basis. I don't think it's advisable because so many things change. The business could turn over. Um, it shouldn't run with the land, so to speak. I think it, it, there should be a, an opportunity an annual opportunity that co perhaps coincides with the renewal of the common victuallers licenses, that the word would go out to the, um, the businesses who are interested in this, and that they would be given a deadline, get your application in, and you can process them so that they can anticipate hitting the ground running in the spring. So those are just, um, the, that's the essence of the recommendations. Um, I've also given you some recommendations on uh, the two applications that are before you right now that you'll be considering soon, uh, Common Ground and Madrona Tree. Uh, what we're recommending is just a slight difference between what they proposed. Um, we're, uh, in fact, recommending that the suggested layout that Madrona Tree is presenting to you, um, that seems fine, provided that about eight feet can be left between the Common Ground boundary and the granite planter so that there'll be room for that 36 inches of um, passageway and for the Madrona tree table. And that's portrayed on page three of the memo. Mm -hmm. And that, that's the essence of the recommendations for the standards and for those two applications, but I'd be happy to try to answer any questions. <clears throat> so uh, thank you for that. But the other thing we wanted uh, was to understand is there any construction, redesign, or anything of the Broadway Plaza in the works? <clears throat> yes, there is, but that's going to be, I anticipate, a multi-year process. I don't anticipate that there would be a lot of new construction <clears throat> right in the plaza area where these two restaurants are proposing to have seating. I don't expect that there would be any change this year. There is some there will be an, an effort begun to get input from the business owners, the landlords, the public on improvements, changes, design circulation in, the, um, in Broadway Plaza. Um, there are already some very good ideas about um, allocating the curbside area in a, d in a different way for um, anyone who uses them. I don't think anyone's talking about changing general parking, but the short answer is it's going to be, I think, a long time before you know, a couple years before we have a, a publicly vetted design that would have any construction changes. Okay. Mr. Byrne? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Greeley, and thank you, uh, Carol. This is great. I really like um, the idea about doing it on a calendar year uh, basis, and um, I also am grateful for your uh, <coughs> research on the insurance um, issue that you brought up here. Um, could you talk a little bit about the, uh, the natural path of travel? Do you think that maybe, I, I guess when I, whenever I'm looking at guidelines like this, I, I like to think that perhaps maybe you know, more stricter guidelines are, could be better off uh, just so they can't really be toyed around with too much. So can you talk a little bit about how you got to that point? 
in Broadway Plaza, one of the, I think the most obvious path of pedestrian travel is the brick pattern that's actually, you, you can see there's a different pattern in the, in the bond of the brick and that's where people kind of naturally want to walk mm -hmm. to go into the stores to run their errands. Then there's the, what you might call the play area that's beyond and that's in a different um, brick pattern. And that's all up for grabs really. That's, it's, a, it's a wonderful area now that the, in my opinion, now that the fountain has been removed. We enjoyed that defunct fountain for decades and you know, I think it, it's time now to do something different in the plaza. So I think you're, you have the ability with these guidelines, I believe, to kind of flex that space every year. And even within a year, this allows a very significant remaining space. Even if Starbucks wanted to come before you and put tables out, you'd still have a nice big area for street performers, an art exhibit, uh, spontaneous uh, debates, lectures, dances. Um, that, that space can be programmed. We have some great cultural groups in Arlington and um, they could uh, you could crowdsource some programming for Broadway Plaza with the space that remains. So I think that you have an ability to, uh, I, with these guidelines I believe, convey to the two businesses an area that they can depend upon using, but still not have boxed yourself out of other uses in the plaza. This would also, I'm not answering your question directly and I apologize, this should also allow a full passageway around the common ground seating area and around Madrona Tree, except for the granite curb where the plaza ends and the parking begins. Okay. Thank you. Now, I, that um, kind of the use of public space uh, did come to mind, look, particularly looking at the pictures, because how kind of the angle it does look like it takes up a bit more space, I think, than it might in uh, when I you're think down the there orange one especially yeah, is dramatic. Yeah, and I really didn't I couldn't envision the um, kind of the space for all the activities that you just ran through, but but that does make sense now. Yeah, if you look at page 4, you're looking at the same view, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of space left over behind where the view of the camera person is. Mm -hmm. That is still available for street performers and other programming. Thank you very much. Welcome. Thank you very much, and thank you for your work on this. Um, I, I have a couple of questions, some of which might actually be through you, Mr. Chair, appropriately addressed to Council. Um, you know, firstly, I, I appreciate that this is all presented to us in the, in the, the um, context of a couple of specific uh, applications that we anticipate. Um, I am looking, though, at the, the excerpt of our regulations that are included here and, it, and if I'm reading this correctly, it looks like if we were to pursue uh, the, the uh, conditions as recommended, which would allow flexibility between 36 and 48 inches of passage, we would have to amend our, our regulations if I'm reading this correctly, because our regulations are actually don't have that flexibility. It says a minimum of four feet of unobstructed passage. W would I be correct in that interpretation? In the um, first paragraph, end of the first paragraph of the right on page two, the first paragraph of the right recommend of the regulation excerpt. Right, that's what's in your current um, right. sidewalk cafe regulation. So it sounds like we would have to update our regulations that's in one order of the to. That's why I included this in here. I wanted yeah. you to see where it meshes and where it doesn't. Right now, it says it, you have to have the four feet, so you you would want to have the flexibility to reduce that. Great, thank you. The um, second uh, question I have uh, has to do with the, the insurance portion. As I read the memo, uh, the recommendation is that the um, insurance coverage be increased for establishments where alcohol is served. Is that, that correct? I think at a Because I'm reading one thing and I, I, I think I heard. Right, I, I, I think you'd want that generally, but there some small establishments that could be prohibitive and I'm out of my league I must confess I'm not an underwriter I don't know that much about insurance but I usually when I've seen a, a coverage it seems like the limit on liability is a million 25,000 isn't a lot particularly if there's an injury uh, I just 
I, I'd be happy to look into it further to see how, if I'm right, that this is common. But it's absolutely for businesses that serve alcohol, I think that's important. Yeah, because, well, I recognize, I, I'm reading here, I see that the town is <coughs> indemnified, but if I'm not mistaken, we're capped at $100,000, are we, per incident? So, uh, uh, that we would be liable for if, if we weren't indemnified. So that, that, that can be a little bit of a, a, a context-specific question, but under the Mass Towards Claims Act, generally speaking, for claims of general liability, something like a slip and fall, the town is capped at $100,000 for liability. Um, I can imagine that there might be other specific circumstances and nuances where someone might at least try to assert other claims. It's not that okay. uncommon that folks try to get around uh, the caps on um, uh, tort claims generally. If this would be properly considered part of the public way, um, the caps might even be lower than that. Um, but I, I, I want to say that I think it's a fair point that we might want to have different levels of insurance coverage um, depending on the context where you have alcohol service that obviously presents a different right. type of risk and liability. And the other thing I should note is that um, from a liability perspective, uh, one thing is the total liability that the town might face. Another is trying to make sure um, that you've got enough coverage to uh, potentially make somebody whole as a matter of public policy. Right. That's the other consideration that I think the board would have to balance. Great. Thank you very much. I'd like to follow up, if you don't mind, Dan, for one, on, on yep. an insurance question. So, uh, town <coughs> council, Excuse me. Uh, insurance carried inside the building does not apply to outside seating? So, one of the things that would have to be uh, examined in any given policy is whether or not that policy was designed uh, to, to, include. to include. And I would assume that it wouldn't be. And I would definitely assume that it wouldn't add the town of Arlington as an additional insured. I think that's the really critical piece for me, is that because this is going on town property, the town has to be added as an additional insured. Mm -hmm. And there might be, um, uh, we might survey, uh, or further survey, I guess, because uh, Ms. Kowalski's already done some of this, what other cities and towns do with similar sized establishments and things like that in terms of the actual amount of coverage they want them to carry. But the, again, the critical piece to me is that we have to make sure that Arlington's added as an additional insured. And I have to say I concur with Ms. Kowalski that we should have an insurance certificate in hand because otherwise there could be a gap in coverage. Mr. Dunn. Uh, Thank you, Mr. I, Dunn. I very much appreciate it. I think that the, one of the things I really think we should implement is as we get these applications, the scale drawing. I think that and so whatever uh, through you or through the board administrator, we should ask applicants to submit that. Mr. Chaplain. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I simply wanted to add one uh, small caveat to Ms. Kowalski's comments about construction. Uh, though I, I second her remarks about the long-term construction, we will fairly soon be doing a little bit of work to uh, remove and replace some of the, the new bricks that got uh, unsettled over the winter. So there'll be a small uh, little repair there. I didn't want anybody to think that we, we said no construction and then see it dug up a week from now. So, okay. What do you need to Ms. Mahan. I apologize for being late. I told my husband seven. I didn't have the heart at six o'clock to say six forty-five. Um, I know right now we're just discussing what the outdoor seating would look like. So I guess I would just put a question on the table because this is public property. Probably recognizing it may just be my thoughts and they don't go anywhere else. But my question would be: since this is public property, is there any way, if a majority of the board um, or all of the board agreed? that we could um, dictate or instruct um, how alcohol would be served. What question am I asking? Is there something that we could say that if you're on public property and the area is cordoned off appropriately, can we say that you can order Bud Light in a bottle, but it has to be served to you in a, a glass? What, what I'm thinking is public property, people drinking out of beer bottles. Now, this isn't what we're discussing right now, so I guess I just would put that on the table, only where it's Arlington Center, and you know, you talk to any kid at the high school and probably Arlington Catholic High School, there's very few places that they actually do go, and again, it's public property. I'm not talking about um, one or two other establishments that have outside, so I don't know if that's really necessarily something the planning director could speak to. I don't, if you can, that's great, and or town council, or maybe if I just, I put it out there and we discuss that in the future. That was my only thing. Thank you. 
I don't have a comment on that except to say that I see the virtue behind it. Um, and it, it's, <laughs> I, I recall at one point when the town was just beginning to allow alcohol under s very s specific restricted circumstances, it seems to me, and I have to defer to town council, of course, but it seems to me that you, if you had that ability then, I don't see why you wouldn't, in my opinion, um, have that ability to do the same with outdoor alcohol policy, but I have to say it's, it's not my realm, it's town council. Mr. Byrne. Thank you very much. <coughs> Excuse um, me. One further question. Okay. Thank you. Um, looking at um, the changes from the planning department to the actual applications on, I'm on page three here, it talks about uh, extending the common ground um, outside seating into uh, CVS's front is that something did you have a discussion with CVS on that or no we didn't no. the landlord of the CVS building is the same landlord as common ground um, but you, you raise a good point it would be courteous to bring that up with uh, the manager of CVS Thank you. I'd be interested in hearing their thoughts on it. thank you I'd be happy to do that okay so uh, this uh, technically is not a public hearing but We've asked the two licensees that we're going to put those uh, items on the agenda next week. But I will allow anybody here wishing to ask questions or anything on this? I saw Mr. Leone. I didn't know whether or not, not in this issue. Okay. And a motion from someone then on this? Yeah, Mr. Hero? Uh, yeah, I, I move to um, <coughs> approve the recommendations of the planning director and to request that town council draft appropriate amendments to our regulations to uh, implement them. Uh, okay, is there a second? Second. Uh, I'm personally uncomfortable approving it based on the insurance question, but the rest of it is fine with me, so. Okay. Mr. I, I'm, fine, I'm fine with amending my motion to say pen, pending uh, further research on the insurance. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Dunn? I, I just did. Uh, the reason it was easy for me to say yes is because it said draft and we get another crack at it. Oh, so okay. The way I interpret I don't know if that's the way Mr. Kira meant it, but that's yeah. the way I interpreted it. Okay, yeah. agreed. All right, so this is uh, basically receipt of the draft then, and the, the idea is that it'd be on next week's agenda for approval, Maureen? Yes. Okay. All right. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? All right, item number three, Friends of the Arlington, Council on Aging. Arthur? Or whoever? Oh, lots of people. <laughs> this is our uh, annual time of year when we generally go before you and ask for your support for our 5K race. And we also like to let you know some of the activities we've been involved in. Um, so in, in a moment or two, I'll start to bring forth and introduce a few other people because um, I'm retiring from the board this year, and I wanted to let you know that there's going to be a new president, and I'll introduce him. And I also wanted to give Susan Karp the opportunity to kind of uh, note some of the programs that she likes that we have been funding and helping her with and everything like that. And one other thing I wanted to just mention briefly before I turn everything over to everyone else <laughs> is uh, in June, we are going to have a little event. And it's going to be a family fun-filled barbecue type event with a lot, <coughs> of, um, a lot of games and prizes and ice cream and everything else. And it, it's for the benefit of the friends. And it's being hosted by Brightview Assisted Living for us. So that will keep your eye out. That'll be coming in June, and it'll be a fun event for everyone. And I'd like to note our new president, who's Ken Greenlee, and if you've ever been at the race, you've seen this gentleman all over the place. And uh, this is uh, Lois Shannon, our corporate clerk. Vice president is uh, Bob McGinnis, and you all know Susan Carr, our executive director of the Council on Aging. So uh, a few words about this year's race. Before you go, retirement is a special word for volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, there'll be another slot open on the board now for some Good plug. energetic, <laughs> dynamic, entrepreneurial individual that really likes to build organizations. So yeah. that's just a plug. <laughs> Stay here. 
Uh, I see Mr. Curl, Mr. Byrne, Mr. Chapdelaine have attended and thank you for your patronage to the Friends, running the Friends 5K. Uh, we appreciate that and we've had great um, success with a growing uh, registration base, volunteer base. Uh, we had nearly 400 runners yet last year, uh, about 120 volunteers plus or minus and then spectators and a lot of Arlington businesses that supported the race over the years. And Art has founded the organization since 2008 and has done a great job in growing it. And we've grown our funding and resource base to be able to help fund some of the programs that Susan's gonna talk about in a few minutes. Uh, this year we've proposed the date for September 27th, uh, 10 a.m. on Sunday morning. Uh, we always do it on Sunday. Usually it's early in the month, but the town day, I believe, is the 13th, which is a Saturday. So typically that's around the weekend. We didn't want to uh, be uh, trying to do two things in the same weekend. So we put it on the 27th, and we hope that everybody can come out and uh, help uh, support the race. Um, the other thing is, is if you get a chance, I, I know some of you that participated in the race, you've been to our website. It's friendsarlingtoncoa.org. Um, you'll see all the photos from last year's race uh, and also a place to sign up for the re registration is going to begin in May. We'll also have volunteers who can start registering now to uh, sign up for the race and our other events that we do. Uh, we have a holiday stocking program with the COA where several um, seniors receive, uh, about 70 plus seniors receive a stocking filled with goodies. Uh, and uh, we have another plan for an event, as Hart said, in, I believe it's May or June? June. June uh, with Brightview. So, and we want to thank uh, the town of Arlington and everybody's help, the community, the individuals, the businesses. So Susan will talk about some of the programs that we have. Thank you, Ken. Uh, it goes without saying that uh, a huge thank you to Art um, in his term of presidency. I have been with Arlington for three years now, so he's been my primary contact with the Friends of Arlington Council on Aging. I think the unique part about the Friends and the relationship with the Council on Aging is that their, their work within the community, they reach out to high school students to have them involved in our programs. Um, you know, it's the, I think it was the track team or the cross country team that was cheering a lot of the people as they were running by. Um, through their stocking stuffer program where they reach out to seniors and help us reach out to seniors by using, you know, police <coughs> to help deliver it. Um, having um, um, other students involved, having seniors involved, it really just is an organization that rich, you know, reaches out to all of the communities. Without the support of the Friends, um, the Arlington Council on Aging would not be able to do many of the programs. Uh, we do a lot of the social programs and through those funds, it underwrites the meal and entertainment to a very low cost, so it really opens the door to a broad range of individuals. They've been very supportive in helping us um, start our LGBT programming. Uh, we've just been uh, successful in finishing our first eight-week exercise program that we run on Thursday nights for our LGBT seniors. Um, some of the, the things that go on behind the scenes are some of the emergency funds that the friends help us with. So if there's a senior in need that other social services don't meet, we're able to reach out to the friends to try to supplement where other, other areas don't. Transportation is a huge issue. Um, we've recently, you know, certainly this winter had a number of seniors that had some um, urgent medical care that just even through our own family of services within transportation couldn't meet. So we were able to use some of those funds and through our contracted relationship with the taxi company through dial -a ride which is funded through CDBG, we were able to get a senior not only to the doctor but also into the hospital. So, you know, there are many things that go on behind the scenes. Uh, we work um, as partners in the aging services. Certainly, um, you know, working with Lois and Bob and now the new president, Ken, we look forward to continuing on with the different things and serving the needs of the seniors in Arlington. Uh, very appreciative of the selectmen's um, support and town manager support of the efforts of the friends. And we continue on and um, continue to identify the unmet needs and certainly fulfill the ones that we do. So I want to thank you very much. Other questions? Or, you know, two of you didn't give speeches yet. Lois. <laughs> Lois, and I, Lois and I were born next door to one another on Farmer Road, and she's way too young to be working with the seniors, I understand. 
Uh, Arthur, on behalf of a very grateful town, thank you for your excellence as president and all that you've done. It's been fun. It's been fun. Thank you. And Mr. Greenlee, my name is m more pronounced as Greenlee than it is Greeley. Uh, <laughs> and I get it the other way. <laughs> yeah. People throw an N in there all the time. Questions, comments from the board? Yeah, Mr. Carroll? Mr. Chair, I move approval um, of the request for uh, approval of the uh, Running with Friends uh, road race, September 27th. Second? I'll second. Okay. And uh, I'll just note that the part that's on the Minuteman has to be approved by the town manager. He's the... I'm coming to him in a moment, and he knows why All I right. am. Um, oh, sorry. Were you done? Yes, you, thank you. Yes, Mr. Byrne? I'm happy to support this um, this year, but next year, if the little heartbreak hill isn't removed from the end of the race, <laughs> I don't know if I'll be so generous. <laughs> you probably heard to say it's all downhill. Yeah. <laughs> no, thank you. happy you run there. <laughs> no, this is a lot of fun, so thank you guys. Do great work. And girls, sorry. Uh, Mr. Chapdelaine, do you have any announcements, challenges, anything that you want to say at this point in time, sir? Yes, please do tell the us. Challenge, the challenge, see if I can push a stroller of Wellington. <laughs> 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 Just mention that. That will be my challenge this year. <laughs> all right. All those in favor of the motion by Mr. Kuro, seconded by Mr. Dunn, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Thank you all very much for your great work. Thank you. Thank you. Item number four, presentation, Hidden, Hidden Treasures, May 16th and 17th, Roland Chaput. Roly isn't involved with enough in Arlington, so. It's photo day. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. It's always a pleasure to see you. I haven't been back to talk to you about Hidden Treasures for a while, and I thought I would sort of bring you up to date because the <laughs> event is this coming weekend. And I will announce it at a town meeting. Uh, as you know, Arlington is one of 40 odd cities and towns in Middlesex County and six little towns in southern New Hampshire that make up Freedom's Way heritage area. Now, there are Freedom's Way heritage areas around the whole country. Essex County on the North Shore, for example, is another Freedom's Way heritage area. But folks out in Devons, which is where the headquarters is for us, decided about eight months ago it would be kind of nice to come up with something called Hidden Treasures. And they got the word out, and 25 of the cities and towns are going to be showing this weekend, everybody on the same weekend, what they think is a hidden treasure. And of course, as far as I'm concerned, our hidden treasure is the Schwamm Mill. I mean, there was no other place in the country that's over 100 years still makes wooden oval mirror frames. They're beautiful. They're beautiful. And so uh, I'm going to invite everybody at town meeting to come on up. <laughs> it's both Saturday and Sunday from noon to 3. <coughs> and Ed Gordon, who, of course, is the executive director up there and is very knowledgeable in the German influence here in the 19th and 20th century in the greater Boston area and what has been happening at the mill. Those antique machines are incredible. They really are. So he's going to be fun to listen to. So hoping you can all make it. Open invitation. No charge. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Roland. Thank you. No motion is necessary in that, I guess. Or? No. It's just but Thank you, Roland, and best of luck. So. Barbara, did you get me yet, or do you need me to smile right now? Or? You're also okay. Consent agenda. Uh, minutes of the meeting of April 13. Request for the seventh annual Hardy School PTO Walkathon. Request for a contract drain layers license. Request another request. Three requests for uh, contractor drain layer licenses. Vote for a sale of wine at the farmers market, and the a request for the annual Greek festival. First step is we'll ask whether anybody's here who wishes to speak on any of these, and I'm going to go backwards and first introduce the Most Reverend Dr. Nicholas Castanas from the St. Athenaeus, the Great Church, uh, to talk about the Greek festival coming up. Thank you so Father much, uh, Mr. Distinguished uh, Chairman of the Selectmen and Honorable Membership and the Glorious Support Council. Uh, good evening. It's a blessing to be standing before you along with other members of our parish and parish council and to present to you for one more year 
our annual event of the Greek festival, which will take place 5th, 6th, and 7th of June. And we've added an evening Thursday, 5 to 9, for fellowship and uh, gyros and salad and the famous lukumades. And uh, we invite you to join us and ask for your blessing in order to move forward with uh, this uh, beautiful event because we do have wine and beer. We do sell wine and beer, and we need the blessing, of course, of the selectmen. We are always uh, very careful and cautious about how we handle all those things, have a weighty um, support staff and a weighty delegation of security people made up of the town's finest, of course, our police staff and security staff. So we ask uh, for your permission your guidance, and certainly your vote of confidence this evening. Thank you. So on this one item, it's four one-day beer and wine um, uh, licenses. We change it, make it a one-way designation on Appleton Place for those four days, and uh, the street closing, Acton Place closed during the festival, right? right Correct. Uh, Father Nick. Thank you. Is a specific motion on those three? Yes. Move approval and a Mo question and comment. Move approval and question comment. Is there second. a second? Second. Thank you. Nice to see you, Father Castanas. I know we started out, I'm prefacing the nice thing first, um, out on town day, um, and I know how big uh, events can be, including uh, the festival. I just wanted to take advantage of the opportunity, and I do live nearby. I live on Howard Street, as you know, which is probably three, four streets over. And last year, there was sort of an anomaly in terms of the event. And I do know we have a resident on Fezzedin Road, um, I know she's left messages and I, I've left a couple at the church office. Um, just something left over from last year. If we could, um, maybe I can call you tomorrow or the next day and we could just talk individually about that. Please and then do. the only other thing is um, some of the residents who live on my street and Burton Road and Fezzedin, uh, again, it was an anomaly last year, um, and I'm sure you're aware of it. it two, two of the nights when it was kind of ending, um, for whatever reason, I don't know if it was a certain group or crowd that came in, um, they didn't leave very quietly and they didn't leave without loitering a lot. As well as, I wanted to bring to your attention, it didn't happen to me, but I went to some other houses. I don't know if um, St. Athanasius um, gave these out or somebody else was, but there were stickers um, that I guess were passed out at the Greek festival, and some of them were, you know, were on homes, you could take them off, a couple of them were on cars. Um, it may not even be anything that you, you did um, with the church, but if you could just be aware of that, if you could keep an eye open for that, because they were all over the neighborhood. Thank you, Thank you so much. And I don't mean to be out. a downer on this, it's just not that, at all. And, and, uh, in the resident on Fezzedin Road, I'd really like to talk to you about that, because that, that was sort of, it was just one massive compilation for that household right there. Thank you so much. Every observation is welcome. Right. And uh, it's important for us to be good and wonderful neighbors and care in every small and great way. I'm unaware of the stickers. Thank you for pointing it out mm -hmm. to us. And we'll work on it, certainly. It might have been from the children's booth. Maybe they had uh, stickers. They were for bumper the stickers. Kids. So, yeah, if you can just they were, they were whoever, bumper stickers yes. on the last on the large side, like this big. If you can just as people are leaving, just thank you. A bottle in the hand or a bumper sticker. If somebody could just speak to them, we'll That's do all. our best to control. I know it's hard. It's and a, uh, in in every way, shape, and form. Thank you. And we apologize if we uh, offended or hurt or inconvenienced no. anyone. Mr. Byrne. thank you, um, Father Nick. I, uh, this is I always enjoy this event and. Uh, living on Appleton Street now. I, um, I was told by a few neighbors that I'd be in big trouble if I did not approve this tonight. So <laughs> um, I do have a question though. Um, extending it to Thursday night, um, can you talk a little bit about what led to that decision? Sure. It was, it's actually been in the making for a number of years. Uh, we just haven't pulled the trigger, so to speak, um, on it. And uh, this year there was a feeling of uh, the parish council to test the waters because there's a huge um, community effort, internal and external, to want to um, feed those uh, that really want to start kind of early. We actually hear from the beginning of the week that we're looking forward to it, we can smell the food, let us taste some early, let us come in and be a part of it. God is still great 
in spite of me and in spite of all of us, certainly. So the deal is, is that there was feeling among uh, parish council members especially to do something on a limited basis and that's why it's the menu is limited in order to get things going and uh, help us out certainly with the biggest fundraiser of our parish for the year. With God's blessings of course, your support, your approval and uh, uh, good weather on bended knees for weeks begging for the good Lord to guide us and uh, those uh, winds to come in that will be on the warmer side. Thank you. Very and less rainy, of course. Thank you. <laughs> Duly noted. Okay. So uh, on the motion by Mrs. Mahan and seconded by Mr. Curo, anybody else here wishing to speak on this for any reason? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Best of luck, Father Nick. Thank you very much. Many blessings. A peaceful rest of the evening. Please go home earlier than some of us do, <laughs> as God so blesses. Thank you, Diane. Look forward to hearing I'll, from you. I'll Thank, call you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Father Nick. Is anybody here wishing to speak on any of these other items under the consent agenda? Move approval. Move approval. Uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Is there a second? Second. Second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. M Mr. Greeley. Sure. On the uh, Hardy Walkathon, I, I do just want to note that uh, Corey has a recommendation that they are they use um, town of, town public safety officials um, on that walk and not the volunteers as they um, stated in their application. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Excuse me. All right, Marie, did you get that? Okay. Well, uh, did we just make that? Um, well, it was in the recommendation. recommendation. Have we, I, I guess I feel like we haven't necessarily followed that recommendation in the past. Am I incorrect? When, um, if I may, yeah. I know when um, the athletic director at the high school, yeah. past two years has had her walk, um, she has been asked to and has um, utilized the Arlington Police Department for their walk run it's it's called something trot i'm going to get in a lot of trouble for not remembering it mm -hmm. so uh, i guess i just don't have the, i thought i guess i thought that we hadn't used the, maybe marie can see, we've never had a, a police officer there huh? in the years that they've been doing it as they come around they come out the front door of the hardy walk on blake street go up herbert road and come back but the town has always given them um called Mahasas to cross off right at the corner of Chandler and mm. in there, but I realize there's more traffic, so I, I don't think they'd object to it, but they'd have to raise funds to pay for a police officer. Mm. But we've never charged them in the past. Yeah. Um, Ms. Greeley, I don't know how, how you want to move forward, but I would rather, I, I, would, uh -huh. I would rather not include the recommendation, that, restri that requirement. I don't know if you want All a separate right. motion or what you would well, like. Did you actually make the motion? No, I actually just thought that we would that was included already. So um, I guess I'm fine with that, and we'll monitor it going forward. Okay. All right. So all those in favor, please say no but five by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Sorry for the and, confusion. Uh, no, probably we should have a conversation with Corey. Uh, I I didn't realize he put that in, or yeah. I would have had. They've always. Yeah. Hopefully nothing will happen this year, but they've always had plenty of volunteers. And it's just for that one hour just to come out and go around and that's it. Yeah. Okay, item number 12, an appointment to the Human Rights Commission. Yawa Degbo, was I, am I in the neighborhood at all? Please come forward. Hi. Hi. Good evening, everyone. How should I have said your name? Yawa yeah, Digbui, that's correct. Digbui. 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 Right. So uh, thank you very much. Would you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, so my name is Yawa yeah, Digbui, as you know by now. And uh, I'm currently a, a volunteer at ACMI. And I actually met some of you uh, last time when we had the hearing to support ACMI. And uh, I've been working with uh, this organization for a couple of years now, volunteering, and specifically on issue related to human rights. So recently, uh, we actually covered uh, the Nepal vigil, uh, which was here last week in front of town hall. And uh, we reached out to local Nepali people, Nepali uh, residents, to really support them uh, in their fight to recover from a zero earthquake. So, um, so that's what I've been doing and covering different subjects related to that. 
And uh, I'm really motivated and excited about this appointment on the Human Rights Commission because uh, I will be able to do um, some similar work but really impact uh, the life of our resident and, and make sure that everyone has an equal and fair treatment as well. Thank you very much for your willingness to share. Yeah, Mr. Kiro. Thank you very much. Um, I want to thank you very much for, for stepping up and applying uh, for this. Um, you know, I, I'm a former uh, Human Rights Commissioner myself, and it's a, it's a great group of, of folks over there. I especially appreciate your um, experience as a youth and education coordinator, because one of the, the um, most important links, I think, is between the Human Rights Commission and the school department, um, especially now. There have been a lot of discussions um, with, with the school department around this. So um, thank you very much for, for stepping up. Also, your communications experience, too, and with, with ACMI will be great assets, I'm sure, to the commission. I'm sure they'll appreciate thank your help. You. Thank you. Move approval. Move approval. Second. So second. Further discussion? All those in favor of the motion by Mrs. Mahan, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Congratulations and thank you, Commissioner Degbui. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Uh, licenses and permits, this is uh, under 13. Uh, approval of the draft liquor license suspension decisions from uh, our town council, Doug Heim. Comments, questions? Yeah, Mr. Dunn. Move approval. Second. Move approval, second. Further discussion? No. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Nice work, Mr. Hine. Thank you. Sure. Uh, traffic rules and orders, presentation of recycling center, Charlotte. Hi. Hey. Uh, I'm Charlotte Milan, recycling coordinator with Public Works. The director of Public Works asked me to come before you and make you aware of the opening of a recycling center. In the Public Works yard, it will be open um, 10 additional Saturdays a year. We already have two very successful, extensive recycling opportunities for the community with Community Collection Day. So this will extend it to um, once a month for the next year, starting in June. And we'll experiment with how the public responds to being able to recycle, um, difficult to recycle items that they can't recycle at the curb, but they are certainly recyclable materials. It's just we need to make a little bit more effort um, to allow the public and provide the opportunity for the public to do that recycling. So this will be a one-year trial. We need to schedule it for an entire year um, in order to have it count towards a program run by the state uh, call, uh, that encourages um, recycling in communities. And by offering this recycling center for this year, we're eligible to receive um, a payment by the state in the form of a uh, recycling dividend, it's called, and these funds uh, come to us because we reach a minimum level of activity in recycling, and uh, the monies come <coughs> from the Waste Energy Credit Program through the Global Warming Solutions Act, same thing, like a re uh, renewable energy credit. This is a waste energy credit. It's money from the state that they're looking to give away, and we're happy to take it. Um, it's really a great time right now for Arlington to have a recycling um, center because uh, Community Collection Day happened on Saturday and um, it was a very popular event and actually caused a lot of traffic problems <coughs> and uh, I wouldn't say problems, um, excitement, traffic excitement and uh, we would like to reduce the stress on that event because it is so popular. So instead of holding 12 of those events during the year which would be overkill at this point, we'll start by offering some additional Saturday mornings. So one more detail, it will be one Saturday a month um, for the 10 additional months that we don't already offer Community Collection Day, and it will be three hours um, at Public Works. So we're excited for the public to come out and let us know how they like it. So if I may, uh, thanks for your excellent work as always. With our mandatory recycling, would we already qualify for the state um, award, the 18,000? No. Really? Because it's not, this I is, can't get over that. Well, this is a particular program that encourages other kinds of recycling. The fact that we have mandatory recycling in Arlington is, is fabulous. But um, this is um, above and beyond what's available curbside. And it's a, the effort of the state, um, this is my interpretation, this is not um, fact. This is my interpretation from going to, to um, workshops and trainings. 
that the state needs to continue to think about how to reduce uh, waste or um, divert waste from um, <coughs> uh, municipal solid waste tonnages in order to meet the state goals for um, solid waste reduction. And they need to do that by encouraging communities to find um, alternative ways to, to put that, you know, places to put that material. And sometimes that has a cost involved. Um, right now, single stream recycling that Arlington participates in is the standard. And that's uh, a service that's available and bid for by contractors to come and collect that material. But other materials are more expensive. For example, we actually have to pay to recycle styrofoam. But it's completely recyclable. Um, we also, uh, coming down the road in the near future, will be mattress recycling and carpet recycling. But in order for the, um, those processes to get developed, for the infrastructure to be there, for um, the technology to develop, it, there's a cost. And so there's some payment going out. And this is a recognition um, by the state that communities need some help paying for that sometimes. So they'll give us some money to continue to fold into um, increasing our recycling and helping build that infrastructure and the feedback systems that will um, make, the, make more recycling possible. Thank you. Okay. I'm still amazed that we don't pr produce enough time <coughs> right now. Uh, yes, Ms. Mahan. Um, now, do you anticipate, will this be sort of the same event collection as what happened last week? Or is this on a much smaller scale, like, Last week had, say, six offerings. This is just going to have the one. Because I'm just thinking of the traffic making Grove Street one way. And literally, as you know, with all the excitement, the line was queued all the way up to by school or court um, on Mass Ave, which I was thrilled. I was very nosy trying to figure out what the heck that was about. But you don't, do you anticipate, or do you have a, a plan, a backup plan or something that if that all of a sudden emerges? This is a much more limited event. Okay. And we encourage the public not to line up for this event like that. This is, I think what the public doesn't know is what's available all the time that Public Works is open. So this is a good opportunity for me to let the public know that we collect electronic waste every time, that all, all hours of the day that we're open. Um, so that's something people don't have to wait for. There are fabulous collection boxes up and down Mass Ave um, that are operated by Planet Aid and there's a Goodwill collection uh, trailer and stop and shop is open seven days a week with a staffed uh, mm -hmm. person. Those are places to drop textiles and books. Mm -hmm. um, this, this information is available on the town's website. Um, so it's the, the addition of these Saturday hours helps um, residents who really don't, aren't available during business hours to come to Public Works mm -hmm. because of their work schedules perhaps. Um, and we're going to start small with just a few of the items. And it will be a chance also, since I'll be the one staffing it at least the, most of the first year, to have another chance to interact with the public um, and answer their very specific recycle questions and continue to build um, you know, that body of information for the public so they know what's available to them. So, so I guess I would leave it with you, Mr. Rademacher, as well as the town manager, <coughs> just for the first couple of times in case there's confusion, that people are just sort of aware that um, mm. if there is a, sort of a mini version of last weekend and the other time we do it during the year, that maybe a couple of people are sort of on standby. Um, and then once people real, I'm, what I'm anticipating is maybe people might think it's the same event as we had last Saturday. So I'm just assuming that you've had conversations also with the recycling people and Mr. Rademacher, and I'll just leave it to the town manager. Do you understand the vein I'm yeah, going in? Yeah, I think the, the PR will be very specific that this okay. is not a new community collection day, and in fact, as Charlotte had mentioned, this is to take pressure off the community collection days so that we don't experience as much volume as we did on the community collection days. Right. But as long as people are kind of aware, at least for first go or two. Absolutely. Just in case something pops up and you have to get, you know, sector four out there for a half hour or something. Okay. <coughs> okay. Okay. A motion. Move approval. Second. Second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Thank you, Charlotte. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 15 letter of support, the preservation grant for the Je Jefferson Carter House, Mr. Jack Delane. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is uh, simply a letter of support asking for the board to authorize you as chairman to sign uh, for a grant that uh, planning and community development through the ARB will be 
uh, submitting to the State uh, Massachusetts Historical Commission to help with some already programmed capital improvements to the Jefferson Cutter House. Uh, so basically, we, we already have funds in the capital budget uh, that would, need, would, would, would uh, take the place of the required match if we were to successfully get this grant. Having the support of the selectmen uh, would be a nice addition uh, to the grant submission. So with the board's approval, we'd ask the chairman to sign the letter of support that was attached to the agenda. So moved. Second. Discussion, questions? <coughs> All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? New business, Marie. Mr. Heim. No new business, sir. <clears throat> Mr. Chapter Lane. A couple quick things. Uh, provided the board a memo uh, to me from the fire chief uh, in regards to the response to uh, last week or uh, last week's very tragic fire, but also highlighting some of the real impressive and incredible efforts by our, both our town employees, town volunteers, and just a, a number of resources from uh, <coughs> agencies uh, throughout the region. So I wanted to call your attention to that. Uh, secondly, uh, received a notification from Massport. Uh, I know the board has uh, paid a lot of attention to the CAC, the Community Advisory Committee, and the track of uh, landing and takeoff uh, from runway 33L. Yes, 33L. Uh, so I, I don't know if you <clears throat> recall, there was some question of when the CAC was reauthorized that Arlington was left out. Uh, the legislature. Uh, remedied that and has added Arlington to the CAC, so we need to officially uh, appoint our designee. Uh, so the, it, it seems as though the appointment is vested in me, um, and they want someone with uh, experience in one of the following disciplines, airport operations, environmental affairs, labor relations, public health, or port operations. Uh, so we have our current designee, uh, Frank Ciano. Uh, I, sitting here tonight, don't know if he has experience in any of those areas to qualify, so we'll be putting out a solicitation and then I'll be informing the board of the eventual appointment. Uh, certainly, if Mr. Siano is qualified and still interested, I think I'd probably give him, uh, you know, the first shot at it, given his experience serving on it, but we'll see how that shakes out. Uh, and then, finally, very quickly, I was shocked. I offered to uh, provide to a student at Stratton Elementary School, town manager for a day at their Stratton, through their Stratton auction, uh, like I did last year. And the winning bid was two hundred and seventy dollars. Nice. Holy smokes! The town manager for a day. I, I, I <coughs> absolutely have to step up my game for that student. So. <laughs> Jimmy, two seventy-five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, am I too late? Oh. <laughs> and the second bid was two sixty. So they asked me if I would give it to two kids, and I, I said yes. I think it's a nice thing for the PTO. And so have to can come I up come in twice and talk? I'm going to have to come up with a good day. <laughs> uh, it's going to be a real good day. Yeah. Nice. That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Byrne. Um, thank you. I do have one thing. Um, so with Adam, um, we've been meeting with the Park, Parking Implementation Governance Committee, and um, it, it's really been a great group of individuals working on this. And um, you know, we had our second meeting two last week, last Wednesday, uh, last Wednesday, and um, I'm really starting to see some progress made. Um, talking about how I'm learning more about parking. Um, Lots and meters than I than I ever knew in my life, and um, you know we we've been deciding how um, car how individuals will be able to you know put the money in. Um, there will be no cash, uh, coins or credit card only. Um, we've been deciding between um, how whether to put in a license plate or to um, you know paper receipts, and we're going to start out with the paper receipts. They're all going to be solar powered which is pretty cool, um, and that's for the lots. And um, it, uh, it's just been, been a great team effort. One of the issues we've been trying to tackle lately is uh, a loading zone, and it's appropriate space for it, which is also not something I um, was anticipating going into it, but it's been a great collaborative effort of everyone involved, and um, it, it's been a lot of fun, and we're, uh, we're gonna keep meeting and drilling away with this, but uh, that's where we are now. And um, we're, we're moving in, I, I will say, we're transitioning into, I believe, starting to talk about the actual meters along the streets now. <laughs> so uh, I'll keep everyone up to date. Thank you. Ms. Lennon? Um, I, I just want to, for anybody watching at home, and I know colleagues and I are, and everyone else is aware as the advocate, that Mugar's developer, Oak Tree Development, um, has booked the Hardy School Thursday, May 21st, um, starting promptly at 7 p.m. I know there are plans for people uh, to get there at 6.15 um, if you want to get a seat. Um, I anticipate that ACMI will also be there covering it, um, recording it, and not live, but just to uh, take it down. And um, so this will be 
we really don't have anything concrete or not so concrete. So it'll basically be the first we're hearing about um, what Mugar's developer, Gwen Noyes, um, on behalf of Oak Tree, is proposing. Um, and I'll leave it at that. My son graduates that night. Otherwise, I would be there. Sorry, Mr. Kuro. Um, only just, just one thing real quickly. I just wanted to note that I was a little late to town meeting last week. It was because um, I was up at the middle school um, at Alice training. This is uh, something that our, our police department is working in conjunction with the school department. It's, it's a new approach to, to lockdowns, which, which uh, takes a more direct um, approach in case there is an intruder uh, in, in our schools. Um, Inspector Porcello, who we know well, <laughs> led the, uh, the training. They are running um, these with, with all of the students in town uh, in a very active way. Um, and uh, I'm very appreciative. It was a, a fantastic information session, and uh, we appreciate our, our police for their work on that. Thank Mr. Dunn, nothing. Uh, the only new business I have is a motion to this board that no NFL official will ever be allowed within the town of Arlington for their unfair treatment of the New England Patriots. Is there a motion to adjourn? I'd like to make a motion that uh, we adjourn but reconvene a town meeting and stay in open session solely for the purposes of any necessary um, publicly posted um, votes we meet, need to take and that our commencement also coincides with the commencement of town meeting adjourning. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, please say by saying aye. 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 The next meeting of the Board of Selectmen, not in conjunction with town meeting, will be a week from tonight, uh, May 18th. 7 p.m.